Amen. Thank you, Jamal. Thank you for that. Thank you for preparing me to, to give a word that God has ordained for us today. And, um, and I'm just thankful. I'm thankful to God um, that during uncertain times, even when you think you got it together, amen, uncertainty is all around the corner, but God is still on the throne. And so as we go forward, um, it, from the comments on Facebook, it appears that you can hear me well, um, um, but for whatever reason, um, the video, but you don't need to see me to get this word. Uh, all you need to do is be able to hear what God is saying at this moment. And so for the word of God, we're going to, we're going to look at a scripture. The scripture says, and it's from Psalm 11, one through four. It says, trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me, fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? The wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on the bowstrings. They shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. The foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? But the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord still rules from heaven. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on earth. Title of today's word that we'll share is shaking, but not stirred. Shaking, but not stirred. The popular catchphrase, shaken, but not stirred, was made popular in a 1960s James Bond movie as he gave instructions on how to prepare his martini. It is now understood that someone, it, it is now understood that someone had been shaken but not stirred by an experience, you mean that they have been slightly disturbed or emotionally affected by it, but not deeply enough to change their behavior or way of thinking. So just think about that and ponder that for me. Today, when we look at shaken but not stirred, that means that someone has had an experience and in this experience, they've been, they've been shaken and, and, and slightly disturbed or emotionally affected by the thing that's going on in their life. It did shake them, but not so deeply to where it changed their behavior or way of thinking. It shook me to the core, but I, I didn't change the way that I think. I think about somebody being stir crazy. When I was young, I, I drank Kool-Aid. And to change the Kool-Aid, I would stir it up. And the, the flavor would totally change. But can I tell you that life might shake me? But life will not change the substance of who I am. And life will not stir me to the point that I don't believe like I once believed. I admit that I'm human and, and life does shake me. Shaken, but not stirred. In verse 2 of the scripture, that we look at we see verse 2 and and it says the wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on 
the bowstring. They shoot from the shadows at those whose hearts are right. Here, when I, I look at this scripture and, and I try to get an understanding, I, it explains to me that the wicked there, that they're constantly stringing their bows and they're shooting at me and shooting at you from the shadow like cows. You have people all around this country haven't necessarily seen it all around the world, but all around this country showing up at, at state capitals and standing on city corners, mad because they feel that they are being treated unfairly, that they are being hindered from making a living to provide for their families and they're, they're showing up with automatic weapons and, and guns because they feel that they are being treated fairly. Feel like they're being hindered from making a fair living and they're showing up all around the country. They're upset because they, they are not able to, to do and go as they would love to, as they uh, would like to, to maneuver their way in. They're mad because they feel that their rights are being taken and stripped away for the past two, I said two months. But can I tell you that black folk in America has dealt with these issues exponentially for 400 plus years and are well aware that if one of us ever showed up at a state capital brandishing even a toy water gun, Bullets would begin flying from law enforcement. Have you ever heard of 12-year-old Tamir Rice on the park playing with a, a toy gun and gun down? There are folk all around this country that are downright mad because for two months, they have not been able to do what they wanted to do for the sake of the health of others. Two months. And we've been dealing as black folk with these types of restrictions. Walking while black, jogging while black, talking while black to law enforcement officers. going through a gated community with Arizona tea and Skittles, trying to sell cigarettes while black. And for two months, these people have literally lost their mind because they can't go and do as they would like to. I don't see many black folk out there with the guns and the weapons because we've been doing this thing and figured out how to still make it and still thrive when folk restrict your, your movement and your actions and your upward mobility. We figured out how to do it. And so these times right here ain't driving us crazy. Not causing us to lose our minds and, and walk around with automatic weapons because we're upset because we have to wear face masks to protect others. Verse three, it goes on and, and verse three, the scripture says, the foundations of law and order have collapsed. What can the righteous do? 
Right now, while folk are losing their minds, but in the midst of, of losing their minds, have not slowed in the acts of injustice and racism. Now, there are a lot of folk that don't like this kind of preaching, saying it's hard to, to have unity with this kind of preaching. Basically, what they're saying is that when you tell the truth, it's hard for people that don't like you anyway to be willing to hold your hand. Well, I'm going to tell the truth. Says Verse 3 says that the foundations of law and order have collapsed. As I, I look at the scripture, and it says that the foundations of law and order have collapsed in the New International Version. Verse 3 reads this way in the beginning. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? God is asking the question today, what, what can the righteous do? That even in the midst of COVID-19, young boy is not able to, to jog through a neighborhood without being gunned down by vigilantes the same type of vigilantes that today take the same guns and, and stand on capital, build, at capital buildings and on street corners, upset because somebody took away their rights. When the foundations of right and wrong and law and order are shaken, what can the righteous do? I don't know about you, I asked the question. When the foundations are shaken, although we have learned that, that the leadership in this country knew months in advance and began setting stops and looking out for themselves or calling what we're dealing with as a hoax, that in March and April of 2020, we started feeling the foundations of life as we know it, shaking under our very feet. I mean, the foundations began to shake under our very feet. Some of us couldn't go to work to provide for our families, but we've been through this kind of stuff before. Some of us couldn't go to the grocery store and buy what we wanted to buy, but we've been through this stuff before. Some of us, some of us have been told to to, to get out of line and, and to go back to our cars because of the way we look or what we didn't have. But we've been through this kind of stuff before. Some of us have been told that we couldn't go to our places of worship where we go to get strength. But we've been through this kind of stuff before. But can I tell you, it still shakes your foundation when you find yourself in a place that, that you've never seen before, that you've never heard before, that you've never experienced before, can I tell you, it can shake your, your foundation. When you can't go around and fellowship and, and touch and hug and tell poor people how, how much you appreciate, it puts you on an island if you're not careful. That's why as a ministry, we're trying to do everything we can to get people to, to still understand that we have to be safe, but at the same time, under, understand that we still have to be connected and we still have to find platforms to touch one another and to not be secluded on an island. I can tell you that my a foundation has been shaken. I've had to try to learn to do ministry different, even on today. Those of you that check catch the recording, you'll be able to see the video, but for whatever reason, the platform not allowing it live, and that's fine because maybe we just need to see God. Can I tell you, when we first entered into the change in our service, where we honored the social discipline, no dis distancing, and no less than 10, People gathering, we, we worked hard as a ministry to follow the rules. 
But it shook our foundation. We had to go and we had to, 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 to purchase all type of equipment to, to, to make sure that the people were still ministered to in a quality way. Took three weeks and we finally got it the way we wanted and then we received more word of title restrictions when it seemed that the rest of the world was trying to loosen that we tighten it up. Oh, but what do you do? You make excuses for the issues that you have? Or do you speak solution? We begin to speak solutions. How is it that we can still keep people connected and so they don't feel like they're on the island? And we went to a different platform. And, and just as we thought things were getting together, we're getting together every day before and literally having worship rehearsals. Oh, but the enemy gets into what we're doing and now my whole team is sitting in a weight room and can't come out. Video is not showing. All the foundations are shaking. Can't do ministry the way that we used to do it, but can I tell you that God is still on the throne? Can I tell you that even as I sit here and I, and I preach on and I look at the responses on Facebook, I, I see you, Lauren Darden, telling me to tell the truth. I see the Lawrence Hall. I, I see you telling me to preach the word. I, I, I see the people of God. By blood, I see you saying, tell it. Richard Dean, I see you all the way from Arkansas saying that God is good. I, even though we're having to use different platforms and we have to use a whole lot of muscles. I heard you, Belinda Burgess, say this ain't the first time at the rodeo that we've been here before. Oh, people of God, we are. we've been here before. We've seen some tough times in our lives. Bobby Stroman, I, I see you saying that God is real, and, and I know you know that he's real because he, he's, he's brought you back when cancer tried to, to take you out, and, and God is real, and, and God is strong, St. Paul family, even in, when the foundation is shaken to know this morning I came, and, and things seemed all together, and we were ready to offer a quality worship experience. And then now uh, we find out that, 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 that we can't do it the way we used to do it. But, but God is still on the throne. Byron Corn, I'm going to preach with the power that God gave me. I'm going to speak the word that God gave me. Because even when my foundations are shaken, Oh, a, a good song can, can begin to calm things down. Oh, can I tell you, a good prayer by a good tweet can put things into focus. And, and God is still on the throne. Sickness and death, lies, social distancing, quarantine, loss of jobs, can't pay bills, bankruptcy, and the never-ending acceleration of racism, no matter what issues of the day, when the foundations are shaken, what can the righteous do? And I, and I ask that question, and, and can I tell you that God has given me an answer. What can the righteous do when foundations are, are shaken? And verse 4 it goes on and says, but, but the Lord is in his holy temple, that the law still rules from heaven above me. He watches everyone closely, examining every person on the earth. Can I tell you that, that when the foundations of your life are shaken, that the Lord is still on the throne? It says in verse 4, and not only is the Lord still on the throne, but the, the Lord is still in control. And not only is the Lord still on the throne, and not only is the Lord still in control, uh, but they said that the Lord is monitoring uh, every last one of our situations. Uh, and so it tells me that, that even when the foundations are shaking, uh, it tells me that even when my world is rocked, uh, it tells me that the Lord is still on the throne. It tells me that the Lord 
is still in control. And it tells me that the Lord is closely monitoring everything that I'm going through. I see you, Betty Nelson, telling your pastor to preach. And just because you said it, God's going to give me strength to do it. Somebody say, yeah. I see you, Teddy Fleming. I pray for your pastor as I deliver a word from the Lord. Somebody say, yeah. Somebody say, yeah. So what can the righteous do when the foundations have been shaken? But we know that God is still on the throne, that God is still in control, that God is closely monitoring my situation. The answer has already been stated in verse one. If you look at the scripture in verse one, before the issue was ever raised, the psalmist says, I trust in the Lord for protection. So why do you say to me, fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? Can I tell you, when folk are telling us to run and be afraid, the psalmist has already said, I trust in the Lord. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yeah. I got a video that you're going to have to watch later because you can't see it now. But in about an hour, you can go back to the page and see the video for yourself. But Thursday afternoon, about 4.45, somebody say yeah. My wife and I, we were sitting in the comfort of our comfortable house in a place of safety in our own home when suddenly the foundations of our life were shaken. We were sitting there and if you watch the video, a tree fell down on the house. The foundation was shaken. We were looking all over trying to figure out uh, what in the world uh, had just happened. Uh, and I tell you, uh, we were shaken. Uh, and I tell you, uh, it messed us up. Uh, but can I tell you that although uh, we were shaken, uh, we were not stirred. Uh, we were still trusting uh, in the Lord our God uh, with all our heart, uh, all our mind, uh, and all our soul. Uh, Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that you were living your life, minding your own business, serving your God. But in March and April, life began to change, and your life was shaken. Something couldn't go to work. Something couldn't go right. Something see you family. Some had loved ones in nursing homes that you could not visit. Some had loved ones in hospitals that you could not visit. But I declare to you that although you were shaken, the Bible says because you're righteous, you were not stirred. And so what I say when I was a kid and something awesome happened in my life. I will say these words. Ta-da! The devil tried to kill me. I was shaken, but not stirred. Ta-da! I'm still here. Tried to mess me up. Tried to mess up my mind through quarantine. But I was shaken, but not stirred. Ta-da! I'm still here, giving God praise. I'm still here, giving God glory to God. God is still good to die. God is still on the throne to die. God is still in control to die. I will 
was shaking, but I stirred. I'm stronger, I'm bolder, I'm wiser, and I'm coming out better. Anybody in the house willing to give God some praise with some thumbs up and some hearts to flood the screen? I was shaking, but I'm not stirred. How do you know to God? I'm right here giving God praise. I'm right here giving God glory. I'm right here shaking but not stirred. To God, there's somebody in the house. God says, I know through all the things that are going on, you're getting used to it. You're trying to adapt. You're not simply throwing in the towel and walking away, but you're trying to adapt. You're not simply trying to survive, but you're trying to learn how to thrive in your new reality. But to be human, you have to admit, I, I've been shaking. But I'm not stirred. I'm still going to trust God through all of this. My behavior, the way I believe, the way I think, the way that I know that God will come through. Nothing's changed about it. Shaken but not stirred. If you'd like to give your life to Christ, if you'd like to be a member of the St. Paul family, if you'd like to recommit your life, I want you to reach forth right now by faith. Put your hands up to God as if you're receiving something. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone that's human enough to admit that they've been shaken, but they're not stirred. They've been affected by it. It's, 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 it's disturbed them. But God, their behavior has not changed. God, they'll still give you praise. God, the way of thinking has not changed. God, they still trust you with everything. But God, they want a deeper relationship, a deeper commitment, God. God, in the name of Jesus, God, bless them, God. Do it for them right now in the name of Jesus. God, will give you glory and we'll give you honor. We're in a new age now. We even offer our new disciples class virtually now. And so if, if you feel that the St. Paul family is a church that you need to have your name connected to, and you want to unite with us in this new reality that we did. Inbox me on this Facebook page. If you're on the, the website, email the address. Let us know, Pastor, I want to give my life and I want to be a part of the St. Paul family and we'll do the appropriate following. But I thank you for joining us, even when it looked like our foundation was shaken. I thank you for joining us today as we lift it up in the name of Jesus. As my queen comes back over and sits next to me, we thank all of you, Joan, we thank all of you who worship with us. Now we're prepared to leave this place.